casting it for your next level for what is written. What is written is written, but a man had to sign it. But in your destiny, there is a man God put that will execute it. I came as that man. Take your Bible very quickly. Is the song of victory? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We started by dealing with the dealing with the patterns of your bloodline. Dealing with the altar and the patterns of your bloodline. Amen. So this is the part two of it. Take your Bible very quickly with me. Uh, Second Kings chapter number five. You know, as it relates to this thing, it's very, very serious. But as much as possible, I will try to work it and work it on time. Now listen, uh, this is the teaching of the Spirit, the Word of God that will open your eyes to see things and then you begin to deal with them. Somebody shout Amen. Amen. As you can know that Comme majority savez, of the majority, battle you are fighting today is inherited battle. Hérité. And, uh, and they are, if it's inherited, that hérité. means it's as ancestral in nature. Ancestral if it's inherited, that means it is what? Ancestral in nature. Ancestral en nature. On Thursday, passé, we saw bien vu. different fa we saw a family and we use Abraham as a case study. Abraham, then we saw certain things that run in the life of Ab Abraham, things that were synonymous to the bloodline of Abraham. Now we saw as he, we saw how it was that Abraham lied, and that lying culture is a spirit. And these things, they don't just come. Somebody had to open up. Now, if there is anything you are struggling with that has been in your family for long, Somebody opened it generations ago. And our duty is to ban the strong man of your bloodline and your foundation, the strong man that orchestrates that negative happenings and occurrence in your family. Now, it's our duty, it's my duty today to ban the strong man, then send the strong man away. Not only, it's not just enough to ban the strong man and send him away, you got to send the strong man away, then shut the door. Because Jesus said, when an evil spirit goes out of a man, according to Matthew chapter 12, if you read from verse 38, the Bible said, says it goes through dry places and seeking for a place to dwell. And if he finds no, he will say, let me go back. I will go back. I will. So demons and powers, they have will. They have willpower. I will go back to my former house and when they get to the former house once the door is open they will enter and this time he's not going to enter alone he's coming back with seven spirits worse than itself is anybody hearing me it's coming back than seven spirits worse than itself and on account of that Jesus speaking the other day he said the situation of that person becomes worse it's possible that you are you are you are experiencing worse of the thing that your father experienced. You are experiencing worse of it, the one that your mother experienced. Probably, if it's affliction, for example, maybe in your family they're just having uh, maybe high blood pressure, and because somewhere you were delivered and. You did not shut the door. So the Bible says, seven stronger spirits, seven stronger SSS. Seven stronger, stronger spirit comes back. Have you ever wondered one person have had problem? Have you problem? Had diabetes? High, high blood pressure? HIV? Have you, have, you, have, you, have you seen that before? One person? Because all the demons have their different functionality that they will express in your, in your life. So that is one of the things. We don't just bound it, we shut the door. Everything that will drive out will not come back in your life. In the name of Jesus. So that's what I, I, I talked about. The new creation of realities about being born again. I said being born again is not automatic. And before I said that, I talked about Abraham. I established lying in their bloodline. Abraham lied. Isaac lied. Sarah lied. The, the daughter-in-law, Rebecca, also lied. 
I mean, uh, Rachel, I mean, Rachel also lied. At different points on the other, or the other, they were lying. Jacob also went to his father to take the blessing that belongs to another, I uh, mean, his elder brother. He also lied. The father said, how come you came back early today? He replied to the father, he said, the God of your father. The thing even became dangerous that he was lying with the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. So that's one. We also, uh, we did, as I did establish that they had issue of barrenness. How it was that Abraham, according to Bible scholars, barren for 25 years, then how the son, Isaac, barren for 20 years, then how the third generation of Abraham in the person of Jacob got married to two sisters and the two sisters were barren at the same time. So in dealing with inherited battle, it goes beyond the one you inherit from your family. Anybody you are marrying, you are inheriting something from that person. So you, if you are to inherit, inherit wise. Yes, sir. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. You got to know what you are inheriting. And before you inherit it, you must start the process of dealing with it so that you can clear some stuff. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Then there was also, we established how the firstborn the firstborn, the four sons in the family from, of Abraham down to many generations, how they don't make it with their inheritance. We did establish how it was Abraham who gave birth to Ishmael and gave birth to Isaac. But biologically speaking, you know that Ishmael is the, is the first son. But we understand that the Bible said Abraham drove them away. And the Bible said Abraham gave everything, all the blessings to who? To Isaac. To Isaac, he gave everything to. Now, even Isaac himself thought it was just a normal thing. It's maybe, like maybe it's a fluke. But watch what happened. When Isaac also gave birth to children, the thing became worse that the children, because of the spirit that runs in the family, that met firstborn, before the end of this service, I'm going to pray for firstborn. There are firstborn, there are firstborn that their inheritance was taken from the womb. There are many of you, the battle started in the womb. Now the Bible told us how uh, Esau was the first son, but Esau never made it to the, uh, to the to, to birthright. Now, when you look at Esau, he was denied of his inheritance. Even when, he, even though he came to say, Papa, you have given it to the wrong person. The man couldn't reverse it back. Something stronger than the man will not allow the man to reverse it. Somebody said, talk to me. Talk to me, Papa. I'm trying to raise a little foundation before we read the scripture so that you can know what we are dealing with and where we are going to as we take off. Gaining higher altitude. Because you need this. We'll take off and bring you to the point. Not you deliver today, tomorrow you go back. It's gravitational in nature. But the aerodynamic law says it's possible you go up and you remain up. So we are taking you up prophetically. Where you are, we, are, we are gaining serious altitude that you will not come down again. You will remain there because we are shutting the enemy out of your life and out of your family. Amen. Somebody shout yes. Yes. So Esau lost it. Remember the mother said she was having trouble within her womb. And she went to inquire. They said two nations are in your womb. And the both of them are, were fighting. Now going back down to Perez. And Perez. You know what happened? The Bible said one was coming out and brought out his hand. According to Genesis 38. And they used something like a red thread, a scarlet, to tie his hand to identify him as the first. But all of a sudden, because of the battle going on, somehow the, the younger one pulled him back and the younger one came out. And the nurse said, What? May the breach be upon you for denying your brother his right. The one that was supposed to come out first. You see the battle. As if that was not enough. The thing continued. In the house of David, Absalom was the senior, but never made it to the throne. It was Solo that made it to the throne. Coming back to the house of, to the house of Jacob, gather my sons together, let me tell them what will befall them in their last days. Reuben, the first son, never made it with the inheritance. 
Joseph brought his two sons because it had been lied to the father. They already buried Joseph in absentia when the brothers lied that that he was devoured by a wild beast. But by the hand of God, God brought him back. And when Joseph appeared before his father, he presented his two sons. The senior one, Manasseh, and the younger one, Ephraim. And then he said, Papa, you are old, and I know you are about to join your ancestors. According to Genesis 48, he took the two sons. Then he wittingly, he did that wittingly. He took the, 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 the senior one by his left, because his father was sitting opposite him, and took the younger one by the right. By the way of positioning, the senior one would be direct to the right hand of the father. And the junior one, by the way of positioning, though taken by the right hand of Joseph, will be at the left hand of the father. The Bible said it came to pass. As soon as, jo as, soon as their father, Isaac, began to bless them, they said, the God of my father, the angel of my father, the one that has preserved us up to this day, generational angel. Then, your blessing be on this last. Then he switched his hand and put his right hand on the younger one and his left hand on the single. So Amen. Joseph closed his eye, receiving the blessings of his fathers to his children. Then somehow he was troubled within him. Then he opened his eye. He saw that the right hand of the father, of his father, was upon his younger son. And that the left hand was upon the senior son. And the father said, Papa, I mean Joseph said, Papa, this is not right. This one is the senior. And I wittingly place him in your right hand so that your right hand can be upon him. Can you switch the hand back? He said, no. I know what I'm doing. He said, you see this one, eh? It will be great. He said, but this one will be greater. By the reason of that verdict, that verdict is a verdict of struggle and poverty. Yes, sir. And if you are a student of the Bible, if you go to, if you go to Judges chapter 6, you will see how it played out. When the angel of Elohim visited the person of Gideon. When he showed up and said, Gideon, mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. Through your hand, I will deliver your people. And Gideon said, if the Lord is with me, why is our situation like this? Well, but all the miracles of old they told us about. And God said to him, and the angel said, go in this that might for you will deliver Israel. Here is response from Judges, chapter from, from verse 12. Down. He said, he said, we are the poorest in Manasseh. That means the lineage of Manasseh was known for what? For poverty. But he said in the lineage of poverty, among the poor, they are the poorest. He said, how can I be the one to carry out this task in this level of poverty? Why? I'm proving to you that Manasseh was not truly blessed. He just said, for saying sake, he said, eh, this one will be blessed. But this one will be greater. That means this one is the focus. This one is the attention. Every firstborn here, by the way of some transactions, and by the way of some demonic, demonic transactions in your family that has made you lost your birthright by the power of the Holy Ghost, we cause a divine rewinding, divine reversal, and we rearrange it back Amen. that you will come back to your inheritance. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I pray for every firstborn. Yes. I pray for every firstborn. Son, yes. I pray for every first daughter yes. that is not living up to the expectation as a firstborn. Whatever transaction that denied you of your birthright by the power of the Holy Ghost, we reverse and rearrange it back. Amen. I don't like the way you are saying amen. Amen. If you are a firstborn, you will take your position back. Amen. Financially, you will take your position. Amen. Your voice will be heard again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your voice will be heard again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I prophesy and I prophesy. I you will take your inheritance. Amen. You will take your inheritance. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Shut yes. Yes. Some of you parents now, 
you are already quarreling with your with your first child, your first son. You say you are not behaving like the senior. Have you forgotten your family where you came from? It's not just by rebuking that child to make that child go into more depression and driven into the hand of the wicked. You got to go back to the basis of the foundation where this thing started. And you got to understand what is it, what happened at the beginning. If we have to go back to the womb where the battle started, we got to go back. Yes, sir. What does little babies in the womb know to be dragging who will come at first? What do they know? I speak Amen. over your life. Amen. Amen. That struggle that started from your mother's womb, where your inheritance was taken as the firstborn, I go back and I enter your mother's womb. Amen. When your destiny and birthright was taken, I exchange it back. Amen. I rearrange it back. Amen. From the back of life where they put you, yeah. I rearrange it, I bring you to where you are supposed to be. Yeah. And everything that is supposed to come to you as the firstborn, from now I unlock it in your life. Yeah. Your life will be rearranged after yeah. now. Yeah. Somebody shout yes. 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 Sit down. So now you know what you know what we are dealing with. Right? You know what we are dealing with. Now, in the bloodline of Abraham, I've established how many things that happens in the family. How many? Number one, lie, lying. Number two, barrenness. And number three, the issues of firstborn. They don't make it with inheritance. I can count again and again. Now, it's important that you know this. Très que vous sachez ceci. If you are not careful et pas attention, and you don't have understanding pas la and revelation la by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit teaching you because the Bible said the letter Bible killeth dit, and the Spirit giveth life. If you are just reading it like a lecturer, si vous lisez seulement comme like I said the other day, I said the difference between a lecturer and the preacher is power. Entre, uh, le, 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 le professeur, uh, it's power. Il est prêcheur, est la puissance. Any, any preacher who just preaches and there is no power Il a pas de is nothing but a lecturer. Il rien, mais and we don't need lecturers in the in, on the altar. On a pas we need pas men de who de can de bring de God de to de town. De not de not de lecturers. De Somebody say, I hear you. So, uh, uh, on the basis of that, you say Abraham. But where did Abraham inherit all these things from in his bloodline? So it's important to note. Now, if you read your Bible, the Bible told us that Abraham was originally from Chaldea, El Chaldea. And they were known for idolatry, they worship idol. So the father of Abraham was a terrible idol worshiper. And you are trying to ask me what is the connection between the idol his father worship and his himself? In Deuteronomy chapter number 5, if you read from verse 7 up to 9 and 10, and also if you go to Exodus chapter number 20, if you read from verse number 3 up to 6, he said something. He said, you shall not make for yourself, can we have the Deuteronomy 5 from verse 7 to 9 displayed? You shall not make for yourself any graven image of anything in heaven or on earth or in the waters, ou dans les or beneath it. Ou part, ou it said, for you shall not bow down to them, you shall not worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. generation. So when God said, I will visit, now, what is the basis of this visitation? Because the father of Abraham has broken the edge and all these demons causing different kind of misbehavior and malfunctioning of the bloodline destiny, they come into time to begin to play. So until somebody pushes them out and shuts the door, that thing will continue in the Family. Because the edge has been broken. And as long as somebody breaks the edge for the fact that the person gives his or her life to Jesus does not exempt the oppression of the consequences of what somebody has done by the reason of worshipping of idol. That's why I say to you that uh, being born again is not automatic. It's in threefold. 
When you accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, your spirit was born again, but your soul, was, your soul not born again, your body not born again. That the Bible said in Romans chapter 12, if you read from verse number 1, it says, you, as you hear the word of God, your mind will be renewed. So it's not automatic, it's a process. As you begin to hear the word of God, your body, your mind will be renewed. Now God made the man spirit, soul, and body. Just like we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Is anybody hearing me? Somebody said, talk to me. Just as God made I mean, we have God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Bible says, made man in his own image and likeness. So we have we have the, the spirit, we have the, the soul, we have the body. So the spirit gets born again when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But by hearing the word of God, your mind is transformed. It no longer conforms with the things of the past because you have, you have, you have been changed. Then, but what about your body? The process still continues. Continue. Because for the fact that you gave your life to Jesus, Jesus hasn't changed your village you and your location. Sense. Yes, sir. It doesn't change it. If they bring your blood and your so father's blood, you still have the same DNA. So you are still connected to something. So that's why when we give our life to Jesus, you have to fight. That's why the Bible says, fight. Fight. Fight the good fight, not just the good fight. You see, your salvation, you have to contend with it, you have to contend about your salvation. You got to fight by what? You say, through trembling, you shall work out your what? Salvation. You work it out. So, it's not if it's automatic, you don't work it. So it's not automatic. Somebody say, I hear you. I hear you. So that's why when you give your life to Jesus, that's why we have a lot of people in the church under bondage. We have a lot of people in different church under satanic bondage. And they say, oh, I'm in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Why is it that the poverty your father suffered did not pass away? Your father is poor. Now you are poor. If everything passes away, that's the spiritual part of it. You come to Jesus, that gives you a platform to resolve all the unresolved issues. If not, you can be a Christian and still be stranded. Yes. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shall I hear you? I hear you. That will not be your portion. You got to fight, understand that there is a battle, there is something we need to deal with, and there are ways we go about it. But there are many of you who have given your life to Jesus many years. The same battle that repeat, the, the same battle you met in your family is the same battle going on in your life. All things have passed away, but the poverty not pass away. Your mother was having ulcer. You too, you are having ulcer. The poverty did not pass away. Your father, your mother, everybody, they use, they use glasses in your family. Everybody. It's the pattern in your family. It did not pass away. We got to understand this thing. In the complete context of the scripture by the Spirit of God, and also a very strong understanding to the disciplines of the Spirit. It's important. It's important. If you catch this today, you will go very far. Even if you come to Bonnie, if you, if you give your life to Jesus 100 times, if you are owing bank, you will still pay. If you are owing bank money, maybe you are owing bank 5 million, 50 million, 500 million, 1 billion naira, 1 billion. Then you come to church and, you know, time for salvation, altar call, you, you came out and lead you to Jesus. Lord Jesus, come into my life, come into my life. I confess you, I confess you, as my Lord, as my Lord, I'm personal, I'm personal, Savior. I repent, I repent of my sins, I, of my sins. Take my name, take my name, away, away, from the book of death, from the book of death. Put my name, put my name into the book of life. The, your name don't enter book of life. What about the book of the bank, as your name come out of it? Talk to us, Papa. So when you come, and you give your life to Jesus, all things are passed away. The money you are owing the bank, will it pass away? No, sir. 
if physical things cannot pass the way, spiritual things are powerful than, 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 than physical things. Yes, sir. So for the fact that you gave your life to Jesus, will not make the money pass away. You will have to pay the money. And even after you have given your life to Jesus, that is wisdom. After you have given your life to Jesus, there are things you inherited, you need to now understand. He said, with wise cancer, that shall make war. So people are making war without wise cancer. And that's why Jesus said, he that must, he that must build must first sit down to do what? To cost. If not, you will fight the same family battle all your life until you die. Yes, sir. You will make heaven only that here on earth you will be very useless. We are supposed to be useful here on earth and useful in heaven. Yeah. Even our Lord Jesus acknowledged it. In Mark chapter 10, Peter came to him and said, Master, the disciples are worried. What's the problem? Why are they worried? They said left, we left everything to follow you. They want to know what shall be our reward. And Jesus said, anyone that left family, left field, business, career for my sake, I will... I will reward them in this world hundredfold and in the world to come. Jesus didn't say, Don't worry, your reward is in heaven. We are not living in heaven yet, we are on earth practicing the heavenly activity. Yes, sir. We are, we are men from heaven bringing down the activities of the kingdom here on earth revealing the kingdom doing the practices of the kingdom for the power of god to be revealed to men somebody say i hear you i hear you sir. somebody say talk to me talk to me sir so it's very very important look at me everybody do you know there are people before they were born they have, they, 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 their problem have started even before they were born come on talk to me please this is very scriptural. Before they were born, their problem already started. I'll show you two scriptures, then I will break it down. Then we will do some things, then we will pray. There is nobody or any family that came to this meeting or that is participating by way of watching or connecting online that we not have the story of their family change from today. Amen! If you are willing, and obedient he says you shall eat the good of the land it's not just enough to listen every instruction you are willing but you are not obedient every instruction that God gives obey it the back door that these demons are coming through to harass your family we are shutting it down today amen so there are people that cannot be rich because it has been determined that they will be poor even before they were born, somebody listening carefully. Yes. It has been determined. It has been determined before they were born. I'll show you two scriptures, then we'll pray. Um, chapter 5 of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter number 5. Uh, let me have, give me from verse number 25. Very quickly. Let's have it projected on the screen. Now everybody, join me here. But he went in and stood before his master. And Elijah said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no whither. And he said unto him, Went not my heart with thee, when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee. Is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and oliviards? and vineyards, and sheep, and oxen, and men servants, and maid servants. 27. And the, lepro the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. Do you know the implication of this? This is a young man, probably no wife, no children at this point in time. Then, something spoken by a prophet who carries God. And the prophet, going into his 
generation forever not you know why this one is dangerous that of elohim is even good he said for generation elisha says forever that means elisha do you have like god step out of step out of eternity and step into time and projected something that would be on the atmosphere of the lineage forever that is to say even somebody that will be born 500 years to come will inherit leprosy as soon as the person is born the person will inherit it now what you inherited today is something that has always been in your family yes sir. and you are working with it without knowing that you inherited something now the same way elisha travel ahead into forever the same way we have to also travel to go back into the day this thing started and to reverse it because from what elisha said it is almost impossible for the curse to be broken mm. this kind of people will go to places of deliverance and never get deliverance because if they are not disciplined by the spirit they can go to where others are getting deliverance and they will go there and begin to fight the man of god who god will use when you see people come to church they don't know why they are in church they are gossiping inside church Chasing woman inside church, chasing man inside church. The enemy said, No problem, sure you want to go to church. I will allow you to give your life to Jesus. But my structure, I will restructure it in another way. I will make you be in church, but I will still put you in bondage by making you to lose focus. Mm. Oh, somebody's not getting me now. We hear you, sir. We are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. We are not ignorant. Nous sommes pas ignorant. So Satan is not afraid that you came to church. He's only afraid that you came to church and you are focused. You know why you are in church. Yes, sir. So anybody that will be born into this family becomes a candidate of what? Talk to me, talk to me. Lepros. Talk to me now. Leprosy. Okay, I'm coming back. Give me Donnez moi first Samuel chapter number one. Un Samuel chapter un. Give me first Samuel chapter number one. Un Samuel chapter un. Give me Donnez moi from verse number twelve. Pas de verset douze. Yeah. Number twelve. And they came to pass. As she continued praying before the Lord, as Eli met her mouth. Thirteen. Now Hannah. Now Hannah, she spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from that from thee. Hold on. That's not what I want to show you something. You came to church to be delivered. And the man of God who is supposed to deliver you is insulting you. And that's your place of deliverance. What do you do? Do you know if you are not wise? At the moment of time, probably the man of God made a mistake and mistook you. Probably he was not in, the, in this climb he was not in his spiritual atmosphere for that moment. Maybe the, the, the person talks to you aggressively, aggressively. Or it can be a protocol, it can be an usher, it can be anybody in the church. Now your ability to decipher that this is not this is not this is not what you came for. That the enemy can enter anybody to stop your deliverance. Yes, sir, anybody. When I say anybody, anybody means anybody. So it's your ability to understand that what followed you has also come. And you keep your calm, you don't lose your cool. For though we dwell in the flesh, we do not walk by the flesh. This is a man of God who says, you are praying your heart on the altar and you are being accused for drunkenness. You see this altar, they are different way. No problem, madam. 
There is barrenness in your family. You want to go to church. So you want to be delivered. Okay, no problem. I will let you go to church. But when I enter into the church, I will use another structure. This time around, the protocols have tried to stop you. You refuse. The gate men try to stop you. You refuse. It could even be the person that invited you to the church. And the same person that invited you to the church started speaking against the church about you. You refuse. And now, the enemy say, which is my last card? Let me use the man of God. Ah, teach us, Papa. And the man of God might speak some way to you. You say, eh, so this thing they are saying is true. I will never come to that church again. You carry your Bible. You go. And the enemy say, that's beautiful. That's what I always wanted. You go back. You start another journey again. It, it takes you away from your genuine place of, of deliverance. Because of offense. That's what the enemy does. That's what the enemy does. You got to listen up, listen to this very well. Though we do it in the flesh, we do not war by the flesh. You only see, oh, why should the man of God talk to me? What about what is behind the man of God at that point in time? Why should that person talk to me? Have you wondered when people speak to you? Have you wondered there are people who speak against a church and they still come to the church? Yes, sir. They still come to the church. Have you wondered? You have to be. That's why we can't stop teaching. We, we, can't, we can't stop teaching about the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will help you and give you ability and understanding to know all things. What do I mean? Sometimes you just got to look at people and know that they are not the ones speaking, that there is something speaking behind them. You are a spiritual person and not a carnal person. If you react with everything that comes around you carnally, you will fail. Yes, sir. Because we are born of the Spirit. Yes, sir. Is, some, is anybody hearing me? Yes, Papa. Somebody say, talk to me. Talk to me, sir. Sit down. Sit down. Somebody say, work it. Work it, Papa. Now you go got, deeper. You got to understand. You must understand how these things work. Look at me. Jesus came for a mission. To go to the cross to fulfill his mandate so that me and you will have salvation. Now, among the disciples of Jesus, which one did Jesus choose to take over from him? Who? Peter. That's physically speaking. Because the Holy Spirit took over from Jesus. I will send you another comforter. But Peter, he says, Peter, on you I will build the rock. So if God, if Jesus by himself chose somebody, that means he did not make mistake. Peter, on you, you are the rock. I will build the church and the gate of hell shall not prevail. Now one day Jesus was figuratively speaking how he will go to the cross. And Peter resisted Jesus, trying to refute what Jesus was saying. And when Jesus, Jesus was surprised that Peter was talking that way. There are some people that have come around me and work, they say, work around me. And sometimes I want to get angry and say, this person, I kick you out, I withdraw my grace. The Lord said, shut up. He said, can you see what is speaking behind him? Now, Peter was just talking anywhere and jesus was angry but jesus being a man of the spirit being a son of man and son of god he looked at behind peter and saw what was behind peter then he said satan catch thee behind me now how can what is the name of peter satan what's his name is it clear that jesus was not addressing peter yes sir but he was addressing something that was behind peter yes sir at that point in time when people come to talk to you and talk about about a church talk about somebody talk about a man of god whom you have seen the glory of god upon you got to be careful that such kind of people they are weapons made up they made themselves as weapons available so that the enemy can make use of them as they begin to talk he was a man of the spirit you got to speak in tongues as a data yes sir. and you say in the name of jesus yes sir. satan get thee behind me teach us papa you got to say get thee behind me yes sir because what the person is saying is not correct I went to heaven 14 years ago and I heard, the, the, I heard some kind of language and they say that that language is not even suitable for mere mortal men. 
Now, when you see people speaking like the devil, you got to know, no, this is not, this is not normal. You got, because the person, you came and your God is already blessing you and delivering you. And somebody is speaking for you to cut off. To cut you off from your place of blessing. And the person is coming to your house. You say in the name of Jesus, you can't come to my house. Yes, sir. I ban you, I rebuke you 1,000 times. In the name of Jesus, the Lord rebukes Satan. You shut them off. If you got to block them on your life, block them. Because Satan wants to speak, but Satan needs a mouth to speak. God wants to speak, and God needs a mouth to speak. I sought for a man. Just as God is seeking for men, God Satan is seeking for men. Yes, sir. Because the evangelism of Satan, he will use men. The evangelism of God, he will use men. Yes, sir. Preach it, Papa. See, this woman was very close to his miracle. Sit down for a moment. Was Hannah close to her miracle? Yes, sir. Talk to me. Very close. At a point in time, look at a thin line between her. She has walked to the last line to cross into a miracle. And the last thing, the enemy could not use anybody for her to stop her. She already got to that level. She's gone too far. You can say, but this person is one of the pastors in the church. Look at the kind of behavior. You didn't come because of that person. Everybody will face their judgment. Yes, sir. So stop judging anybody and forget. And you move forward and do what you came to do. Yes, sir. It was a whole geo here. And the woman, imagine the woman say, I don't blame you, sir. Now, barrenness, I blame. If I know barren, I'm not going to come here. And the woman walk out of the man of God. Then on top of that, the man of God gets angry and says something negative to the woman. That naturally increases the problem. But she said, no, sir. Go to verse 15. Give me verse 15 very quickly. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord. Proverbs 15 verse 1 says, A gentle answer turns away wrongs. Somebody called you a drunkard and you still say, No, my Lord. Some people will say, I don't blame you. Just walk out. Do you know what you are walking out from and what you are walking into? Ah. You see, some people talk in here, you see carnality and, de and demonic, demonic presence pe personified in their life. You say, upon everything I've done in this church, what have you done? You have not done nothing. You have only helped yourself. I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail. Your name was not there. Count it a privilege. I want to resign my position from the church. It's only fools that resign from grace. You can't meet a raw grace. You can't meet a raw grace. And you say, I want to resign. I don't like the way they are attending to me. They don't do this to me. No. Satan is speaking. Better start praying. You, you got to understand, this woman was the last decision between a miracle and losing a miracle. She looked at the man. She said, you know, you got to, you got to, sometimes when you don't, don't judge people. When you judge the bad things they have done, what about the good things? 
The woman remember this man, this is the man of God that has been encouraging me. This is the papa that has been praying for me. This is the prophet that has been prophesying to me. Today, why will I get angry because he spoke this way? Maybe he's angry or something upsetting. He said, my Lord, I am a woman of, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I poured out my soul before the Lord. 16. Count not thy handmaid for a, for a daughter of Belia. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken it at 17. 17. Can you give it to us? Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. This is the same prophet who said you are drunk. Now, look at me everybody very quickly. I'm teaching two things at the same time. Look at me. The adversity will come. Then come the blessing. Yes, sir. The man was praying and what, what the enemy greeted her with was this wicked response. When Jesus was gone fasting and praying, that's why you cannot grow. You finish fasting and pray, praying. You are happy in high spirit, basking on the euphoria of the times you have spent in the presence of God, praying and calling for his intervention. Then all of a sudden, after the fasting and prayer, the next thing the enemy comes for is a bad news or uh, uh, so, uh, I mean, somehow Tragedy strife. You say, oh God, where are you? No. When Jesus finished fasting and prayer, it was not God that came. It was the devil that came first to yes, him sir. three times. And it was after the temptation that angels came to minister to him. Until you pass your test, angels will not bring your results. Yes, sir. Say it again, Papa. You are preaching, sir. The preaching bishop. I see. I see small Christians. Small, small, oh, oh, man of little faith. If the devil did not come, that means your prayer was not answered. Yes, sir. Ah. Ah. Talk to us. The enemy is angry. Yes, sir. Ah, look at what they have come. Let me try to stop them, and God will stay by the side and see how you deal with that issue. Yes, sir. And by the time you finish, God say, yes, that's my boy. That's my son. That's my man. That's my girl. Yes, sir. That's my woman. Yes, sir. Then he says, now go to him. Oh. What are you talking about? And look, look what this. He said, and the God of Israel grant thee that petition that yes. thou hast what? Ask of him. 19. Okay, stay 18. And she said, let thy handmaid, thy handmaid, find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. But watch this same woman. 19. And they rose up in the morning, early, and worshipped before the Lord, and returned and came to their house, to Ramah, and Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. When was she remembered? After that encounter, when she left Grace Nation, went back home, the Lord remembered her. Yes, sir. I am speaking for somebody. That thing you came with as your request. By the time you go back, the Lord will remember you. Amen. Sit down. Sit down. Give me the scripture. Give it back to me. And the Lord remembered her. Listen, I'm reading, I'm reading all this for a reason. You know, this is not where we're going to. I'm showing you something. That things can be decided before you were born. There are some wicked and demonic decisions taken decisions by the reason of the transactions of our father's house that we need to change. Verse 20. Give me number 20. Verse 20. 
numéro 20. You, you got to be fast, please. Wherefore, it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, that she bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. That's the meaning of Samuel. Samuel means the one that was asked of the Lord. And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. 22, quickly. But Hannah went not up, for she said unto her, her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and there abide forever. 23. And the canner, her husband, said unto her, Do what cement thee good. Tarry until thou have weaned him. Only the Lord established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. 24. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh, and the child was young, 25. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Shiloh, 26. And she said, Oh my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee, dear, praying unto the Lord. She has returned for testimony. Walking into her testimony, the enemy wanted to walk her out. For this child I prayed, and the Lord had given me my petition, which I asked of him. 28. Therefore, therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, it shall be lent to the Lord. Another translation says forever. And he worshipped the Lord there. This, this also means forever. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent unto the Lord. That's to say, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. That's to say, he shall belong to this altar for the rest of his life. Everybody look at me. Look at me, everybody. Are we still together? Yes. Watch this. This This young man, Samuel, this little baby here, the mother just went finished winning this guy and taking him after I was winged. The mother took him and the mother said, this boy forever, as long as he lived, he shall be lent unto thee. It was not Samuel who gave himself. It was the mother who gave him. Now look at two things that will implicate Samuel if he was to turn the other side. Number one, Samuel was one of the people that Samuel was never Jesus. allowed to make choice of what he would become or the kind of profession or career of what he would choose to do or become. Before he was born, the mother went to the altar and said, Lord, if you give me Samuel, I will bring him back to you. I want to make a deal with you. I have looked at your house and discovered that there is no prophet anymore that will stand in the shoes of your servant Eli. I have seen how the sons are misbehaving. Now, Lord, I want to cut a deal with you. Lord, give me a son and I will give you a prophet. And they shall be lent together to you all the days of his life. So, when the mother of Samuel was making this vow, it was on behalf of Samuel, even though Samuel was not born. Look at me. Can Samuel become a lawyer? You know when children are growing up, this one says, I would like to be a doctor. This one says, I would like to be a pilot. This one says, I would like to be an engineer. If Samuel says any of those things, he will never work. Yes. Even if he chooses to become a pilot, he will crash. He will not even, he will not even, will not even he will be distracted he that he can't, distrait. he can't even go through it. Why? Pourquoi? What Samuel will be Samuel was decided by the mother. Who decided the suffering you are going through? Ah. My message is almost done. Who decided this battle you are going through? 
At what point was this sickness in your bloodline decided? Who decided it? Which of your fathers went to the devil and entered into covenant and by the reason of that gave the enemy the right of access, the power of attorney, the power of ownership to come into your family to direct the affair of things at what point in time? Because somebody must break the edge for the devil to come in. If you break the edge, the serpent will bite. Who break the edge? One of the things we are establishing is to rebuke, is to rebuke the head. Amen. Drive the devil away. Then shut him off, your family. And so that your family can move. Yes, sir. And become what they were originally predestined by the predetermined counsel of Elohim to become. Your family was, your family was born into greatness. We saw how a man by the person of Judah, when the prophetic mandate rested upon Judah, according to the declaration and the blessing of his father in the person of Jacob he said Judah him is the one that his brethren will bow down before and the scepter shall not depart from him until Shiloh comes and they will be a law giver but the Bible told us again 500 years the destiny of people were decided because of one mistake the man called Judah made the Bible told us how unknowingly you know you know in law ignorance is not an excuse that's why I keep telling you that ignorance is a license to bondage. He slept with a daughter-in-law without knowing that it was the daughter-in-law. Now, the moment he slept with that man, it takes with that woman, it takes one person to make mistake for many people to suffer. I don't know who mistakenly took this decision that is making people poor in your family. Yes. I don't know who took this decision yes. that is making people burden in your family. Yes. I don't know who took this decision yes. that is responsible for this incurable sickness, be it high blood pressure, be it be it cancer, be it diabetes, yes. be it whatever, yes. be it HIV, yes. be it hepatitis B. Yes. Somebody took the decision of this suffering, but I want to ask for mercy. Mercy is exemption from judgment. Yes. By mercy, may you be accepted from this judgment. Amen. Somebody said, talk to me. Talk to me, Papa. If you just give me a few more minutes, I will work it and deliver it. Work it out, Papa. Somebody talk to me. Work it out, Papa. Somebody say, work it. Work it out, Papa. You just give me a few minutes. Sit down. Sit down. As long as you, you give me your focus, I will work it. Somebody say, work it. Work it out, Papa. Somebody took this decision. When this man went and left his household to sleep with a woman who played the role of a prostitute by the way of Wardom, and the woman became pregnant. What is the result of that pregnancy? Because the scriptures cannot be broken. Because you gave your life to Jesus, that doesn't mean the scriptures will be broken. No way. The Bible said, for the scriptures to be fulfilled, that which was spoken by the prophets, que les écritures soient remplies, ce qui a été dit par le prophète. Deutéronomie 23, verset 2, il dit que les pasteurs ne vont pas venir dans l'assemblée de la Seigneur pour combien de générations 10 générations. According to Bible scholars, la génération est about 50 ans. Les générations sont comme 50 ans. Mistake of one man, sir. Mistake of one man. For 500 years, people will lose their rights. For 500 years, anybody that comes under that climb of 500 years, they will lose their inheritance. No matter how hardworking they are, they will lose it because somebody has made the decision on their behalf. By one mistake that one person make. But we are about to break out from it. Yes, sir. Now, on, 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 uh, on tests that I showed you in the scripture, how ten generations suffered, nine, until it came to the ten generations. You remember? In Matthew chapter one, he yes, said, this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ from Abraham. I know some of you were not around. I will make an attempt to show you this again. Deuteronomy 23 verse 2, come on, come quickly, give it to me. You know, when, when this man slept with that lady, the lady, the lady, it's not or was not his wife. 
You remember? That was the wife of the son that died. And there is a Levitical law, tradition and culture that permits a brother to marry the wife on his behalf. The, you marry on behalf of your deceased brother. Then when you marry her, that kind of marriage is called the never right marriage. That marriage that permits according to culture for a brother to marry the wife of the late brother than to raise children for the late brother. It's a tradition. Now what happened? So Judah did not allow any of his sons to marry that one. He said, I don't know whether it's your son, your witchcraft that killed this one. I won't give you another of my sons. And the woman became aggrieved. And she was, what the woman was basically fighting was her right. He says, she, in her mind, since you refuse to give me your son, I want to have a child and I will have it anyway from the family. So the woman went and disguised herself because she knows that there is something in the bloodline that they have weakness for certain things. So when the woman appeared on the way, dressed like a prostitute, do some kind of makeup. You know. Don't be moved by makeup. 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 Because there can be there can be some things behind that makeup. Yes, sir. Makeup. Imagine a lawgiver was deceived by makeup. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Uh, who is making up? Take it easy. When the guy saw the lady, how can you not know who your daughter-in-law is? The guy said, man. The Bible says she was with the attire of a prostitute. That means not everything you wear also wear is a fashion. Yes, sir. There are where you dress and expose your body. It becomes an attire of a prostitute. Teach us, Papa. And what happens when men go, when 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 a wayward man who have no fear of God goes after a prostitute, his mission is just to go there and have a pleasure and go. And that's why, if you continue wearing the attire of a prostitute, you will keep attracting wayward men who is just coming to have something to do and go. So when you say men always come to have a piece of you and go away, by what way have you attracted such men? Yes, sir. By what way? Make up. Who is making up for my sake? There are the laws of attractability. What kind of law did you use to attract him? And for how long will you use makeup to keep him? Makeup is a device. Somebody said, talk to me. Talk to me, Papa. No, don't worry, don't worry. Don't get angry with me, okay? Permit me for today, but after today, forgive me. But permit me for today. Now listen. This woman. Deceive the man. No wonder the Bible said beauty is a, a child. And it's deceptive. So when the man saw the girl, he said, Oh my God. He said to his friend, the Adulamite, You see who did here? See how she finds. When the prostitute starts getting beautiful in the eyes of a man, that man is not normal. Yes, sir. Did they do you? Who do me? Today I break you out in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's why you are a man. You have a wife at home. Your wife is praying for you. Beautiful. Only you. You they go look for one. Make it. Preach it, Papa. That did make up. Make up. You now go outside and carry something. Nyama nyama and bring to your home. And bring to your wife. Do you think it's normal for a that lady to be following your husband who is married? And Oga, have you asked yourself? Now, so you can't find rich for this world. Now, you get everything. Your money and your soul is what is involved. 
Because in everything you go for, there is exchange. Life spiritually is trade by butter. Yes, sir. What have you been exchanging all this while, sir? Mm. Teach us, Papa. You got to be careful. Somebody say, be careful. Be careful. If you have a man standing by your side, tell the man, be careful. Be careful. Fear me, couple. Hallelujah. You know, you have to know what is attracting you. Yes, sir. Listen, listen. In the family of Abraham, only fair women, fair women, beautiful women. Abraham married a beautiful woman, Jacob, a beautiful woman. Then, when it came to the third generation, I mean, Isaac, a beautiful woman. The third generation, Jacob. The Bible said the man had two daughters, Leah and Rachel. One, beautiful. The other one, you know, fine. No, be me talking. The Bible said she's got delicate eyes. Hallelujah. Then I said, Oga, which one you will choose? He said, uh, Our family. That one, the beautiful. He like makeup. He went for the, even though they did not give him that one. When you find out that he's been played, he said, why did you do this to me? The man said, well, if you want the beautiful one, I need another seven years of your life. He said, if not for beautiful, I can do anything. Take the seven years. Oh God, where's your ATM card? Did you not, did, did you not release it? He said, go and withdraw whatever you like. Meanwhile, your wife asks you for money, you are angry. In the name of Jesus, I deliver you. Amen. The bloodline thing is strong. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Up to the time of David, kings went to war. David saw a woman, beautiful woman, while watching color television. When kings went to war, he said, ah, that woman, she's pretty. Who, where she come from? Go and fetch her, bring her. You know that bloodline, eh? You know, there are some men. You know, the Bible says we are all wonderfully, fearfully and wonderfully made. Some men love them wonderfully made. And some men love them fearfully made. That Teach man, us, that man, eh? That man called Judah, he loved them fearfully made. So when he saw a fearful woman, he said, what are you talking about here? Then he said to Abdullah my his friend, you they see what you are they see? Oh boy, anything will go up and make it happen. Something must kill a man, you go die. Just Papa, he they enter. They say, but you are king now, they will see you and say, forget. Something must kill a man. You just the watch. And true to something, kill a man. Some, something. If you have to choose what will kill you, why not choose something better? Yes. Choose God. Choose God. Choose his kingdom. And what happened? Watch everybody. Listen. The man slept with a woman. And when he got to the woman, he didn't even know it was a, his daughter-in-law. The woman said, what are you going to give me? He said, I don't have cash. But when I get home, I will send your money. The woman said, no, give me a pledge. Give me collateral. You know what the man gave us a collateral? He gave the signet of the ring that represent the authority of kingship. The seal and authority. That's what he gave to the woman. That means he willingly relinquished his prophetic inheritance. Because they were given the throne not by rotation, by hereditary. Yes, sir. That means the tribe of Judah will produce the throne, will produce people. And it was from the tribe of Judah that Jesus had came from. As we read, you see. Somebody shout out here. Ah, yes, sir. But listen, listen, give me your time. I will round up in a few minutes. Eventually. The woman became pregnant, and it was told to the same Judah. That's your daughter-in-law, the one you refused to marry another of your son. By the way of the Leverett law, is pre she's pregnant. And when you are pregnant like that, and not with a man married to, 
One of the laws says the woman should be stoned to death. So when they fetch her, Judah passed a verdict that she should be stoned and burned to death. The woman says, sir, before you stone me and burn me to death, since you are asking who is responsible for this pregnancy, she opened her bag, the makeup bag. The makeup bag. From the same bag, she brought the She brought the signet. She brought the staff. She said, Who, the, whoever owns this thing is the one responsible for the pregnancy. It was then the eyes of Judah was open. He said, oh no. She had, she's, she's even righteous than I who has put the verdict for her to die. And God said, 23 verse 2, because that child came by the way of a bastard. And the king by himself has caused something that will make, has taken a decision that everybody for 500 years will suffer. You're coming out of it. Amen. Now see what happened. I want to repeat it for the benefit of some of you so that um, I'm trying to bring it back to your memory fresh so that as we begin to pray and as God begins to give instruction, you know how, very, how important these things are. It says, a pastor shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to his tenth generation, shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. A pastor, an illegitimate child. One of illegitimate birth. What, what translation is that again? Amplified? New, New King James. Okay, New King James. After that, I will take from the Amplified. Go ahead. One of illegitimate birth shall not enter the assembly of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation, none of his descendants shall enter the assembly of the Lord. Okay. Uh, you, okay, when I read this, no, go back to Amplified, sir. Go back to Amplified, please. Listen carefully, everybody. A person of illegitimate birth shall not enter the assembly of the Lord. Shall not enter into the assembly of the Lord. That means he will not have inheritance or be a partaker in the Lord. None of his descendants, even to the tenth generation. How many generations? Now, if you're going to do this mathematics, according to Bible scholars, generation is 50 years. Uh, 50 times, I mean, 50 times 10 is going to give you 500 years. Am I correct? Okay, we, we, let's deal with something again. All right. Um, you know, the Bible said that the woman, when it was time for her to deliver, she has two babies in her womb. You remember? One's name is Perez, and the other one is what? Perez. You remember? Okay, we will go a bit. Give me Matthew chapter 1. Let me show you. Then after this scripture, we're going to pray. I just want you to see something. How one person did something that is affecting many generations. But thank God you are here. Our fathers have seen and they are no more. Lamentations 5 verse 7. Our fathers have seen and they are no more. But we bore the iniquities of our fathers. It takes one man to sin for many people to suffer. It takes one bad decision of one man for many people to suffer. Okay. One person. Whatever transactional decision taken before you were born by your father's house and your mother's house, I speak mercy. Somebody shout mercy. Mercy means exemption from judgment. It's only mercy that can close the door then bring you out from it. Somebody shout mercy. Mercy! Okay, let's start from verse 1 so we can get it clear. I will tell you where we'll begin to do this counting. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Did you see it? The book of the generation. Go back. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. It's beautiful about the Bible. Number two, Abraham, Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac, and Isaac begot Jacob, Isaac and Jacob, Jacob begot Judas, Jacob Judas, and this what? Brethren. Judas this is Judas now, right? That's the Judah that misbehaved. Judas qui is with, that's the lawgiver. And it says, they have raised a bastard by the way of that relationship. And for 10 generations, 
none of the people for that 10 generation, anyone born within that 500 years, none of them will see progress. They will suffer. Okay, listen. This is the Judas now. And Judas began to... Can you see it now? Come on, somebody help me. Okay, we are going to count. Judas begat Pharez. That's Pharez and Zara of Tamar. That's one. Correct? And Pharez begat Esrom. Two. And Esrom begat Aram. Three. And Aram begat Aminada. Four. And Aminada begat Nashon. Five. And Nashon begat Salmon. Six. And Salmon begat Booz of Reka. How many? And Booz begat Obed of Ruth. How many? And Obed begat Jesse. How many? Uh huh. Number six now. And Jesse begat David the king. If you want to clap, what is this now? You better clap. Can you clap for Jesus? Clap for the Holy Spirit. Hold on. That's how many? How many? So the kingship was restored at the 10th generation because scriptures cannot be broken. Stand to your feet, everybody. One person suffered. One, I mean, one person made a mistake. Many people will one suffer. Person, no. One person. Yeah, it's scriptural. Our fathers have seen and they are no more but we born in the presence of our fathers. Through one man, sin and death came into sin the world. Mort, but through another, another man, righteousness and life. La justice est... Your son just entered university one year, under one year. He has already joined Black House. He has already joined a year. Man fight, Bukania. He has joined one of them. One year in school. You say, but I did not join. Was your father not a native doctor? Was your father not an idol worshiper? Did your father not come from a deity that they are bearing their name? Mwosu. It's the name of a deity. Yes, sir. And you are born again, you are bearing Mwoji. Tu es né encore de nouveau, il te porte le nom. Njoku. Mwabara. Mwosu. Mwankwa. We change it in the name of Jesus. Amen. How do you, what do you do? How do you close it? Like I mentioned, there are five things always we must do. By the way of ending this battle, there are five things we must always do. Five steps to closing this demonic doors. Number one, we have to repent on behalf of whoever opened that legal entry door in our bloodline. Can Samia become a king? Can Samia become an engineer? Talk to me, I don't like the way you answer. Who took the decision on his behalf? Who took the decision of your suffering today? Your mother was desperate to have children. She visited the deity. She visited deity. Visited the marine spirit. And she agreed that give me a child, I will serve you. Are you not the product of that transaction? So what are you talking about? No, no, what are you talking about? You say in the name of Jesus, I'm a new creator. I command you to go. Like that. Okay, why not go? You finish prayer, the power still come. You must understand when we talk about the power of attorney. You were duly and legally handed over. So when you pray, the power says, prayer does not stop me from coming to my house. If you any prayer, we person one pray, may you not come back to your house. 
You take key. You have the key. When you get there, you open it and enter. Somebody shout amen. 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 Some of you came, you come from family where they worship Python. Up to today, they still they worship Python for, that, for your village. Are you not from that village where they, where, where they forbid anybody from killing Python? If you come from such community, lift up your hands, let me see. So you can know that I know what I'm talking about. No, lift up your hand, don't hide. The Python not there for front of Una house as I talk. So. They marry a woman. The python, one momentous python, big, now entered. The, the woman shouted, hey, hey, hey. They said, don't shout. The python came to welcome you. Me, python, welcome me. The day where they come on the house, go hide the python. Uh -huh. Because physically, I will kill the python. Yes, sir. Spiritually, I will kill the python. Yes, sir. Hold on. You came from such village. By the reason of the, of the demonic co covenant constitution of the founders of that community, they went to the deity and said, we are going to submit to you. We will not kill you. Save us. That's why they don't kill serpents in your place. Yes, sir. And some of you, up to now as I speak, in your villages, there are rivers and streams that are sacred. Nobody there eats fish from that water. Nobody from that village eats fish from that water. Don't you have it in your village? No, you have it in your village. Huh? Even in your village. Okay, now. No, I'm teaching you practical things. Those things. No. At one time, God said, take charge. I put you in charge of everything. From fam in, co in community where they don't kill, where they don't kill serpent. God said in Genesis 3 from verse 15, he said, I put enmity between the seed of the woman and the serpent. The serpent shall strike the heels of the seed of the woman, and the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. He didn't say the seed of the woman shall embrace the serpent. Teach us, Papa. You give birth to a little baby. Before you wake up, you see big serpent. Python on your bed. No, you tell the Python to come to my house. Ah. If I will not discipline you on that Python, I will bruise the head of the Python. Why are you not eating the fish from that water? He said, no, we know we the forbidden. Okay, nobody tell you one of the forbidden. There was an agreement now. Two cannot move together unless they agree. Yes, sir. Oh. You are asking why you are having sex in your dream. From your village, everybody is, everybody is covenanted to the marine. Your village. Your community covenanted everybody to the marine. So you are always having wet dream. We have to go back to where this thing started and break you out from it. You are breaking out in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the first thing we do, somebody started it. Our fathers, he said they have seen and they are no more. We must, by the way of wisdom, by the right counsel of scripture and the spirit of God, break out and shut the door in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. So that's number one step. We have to repent on behalf of whoever opened that door, that legal door in our bloodline. Are we ready to do this? Yes, sir. Then we ask for mercy. Mercy will give us divine exemption. Now lift up your right hand. Let's take this step one. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. From the throne room perspective. From the throne room perspective. I ask. I ask. 
for forgiveness. For forgiveness. Oh. I repent. I repent. On behalf of my ancestors. On behalf of my ancestors. On behalf of my father's house. On behalf of my father's house. On behalf of my mother's house. On behalf of my mother's house. I repent. I repent. I repent. I repent. Whatever sin they they committed. Whatever sin they committed. Whatever sin they committed. Whatever sin they committed. Whatever ungodly transaction they made. Whatever ungodly transaction they made. That I am bearing the consequences. Lord, Señor, Lord, mercy, mercy over my father's house, over my father's house, over my mother's house, over my mother's house, over my ancestors, over my ancestors. I repent, I repent on their behalf, on their behalf. I ask for mercy, I ask for mercy that I, that I, and my father's house, and my father's house, my mother's house, and my mother's house, my children, my children be exempted, be exempted by mercy, by mercy in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray that prayer, somebody. Open your mouth, open your mouth. In the name of Jesus, you are exempted. Lift up your hands. There are four steps we would need to take. More. Remaining four steps. Hold on, quickly. Attendez, très going rapidement, quelque chose se passe. Vous know, savez, on va aller, aller sur les étapes. Regardez. Do you know, Vous savez, the transactions, they are so deep. les transactions sont profondes. Some of you, from, from families where you came from, they buried human beings alive. The Bible says, and the blood of Abel cried. From the ground. You know how many people that your father's house donated to raise that altar to get protection and all and everything they were looking for in the days of ignorance, in the days of foolishness. The Bible said the blood of Abel cry. Which blood is crying in your family? Some of you, your forefathers were into ritual in another way. They were selling human beings. They call it slave trade. Everywhere they have done slave trade or where they transport the, the slave through, I'm here to see anyone that is developed. From Badagri to Arochuku to many other places. One time, a journalist, a veteran journalist, 
did an investigation, an investigation on the slave trade, Sira. was doing documentary. Then to the places and those that live and around the riverine area, the pla those rivers that they were, uh, the I mean, transporting, transporting them through, when they are sleeping at night, they will be hearing the voices of those slaves crying and the clutching of those chains and fetters around their hands. This is what happened several years ago, but their spirit is still hovering around those areas. What yeah. now happened to the one that sold them? Mm. You know, according to history, they say Badagri is the first place where the, uh, where, where, where an upstairs was erected in Nigeria. Oh. But Badagri go to Badagri and check the level of development there. Do you know how the road in Badagri, how bad it is? If that, that's the first place they built upstairs, Thus, by the reason of development, there is no place in Nigeria that ought to be more developed than that, that place. Then you go to a place like Arochuku. And you go to the homes where their fathers, forefathers belong to slave trade. And you know why you must not play with your service with God? Some of you, you they say your forefathers have so much land and you inherited those land. You built on those land. By what way did they inherit those land? They became rich by selling human beings, slaves. Please, listen to me. What I'm going to say will offend a lot of people, but listen to me. When your forefathers sold those things, you said, my father, get land. How did your father, your forefather, land? How did your father, your forefather have those land? Now, you are selling those land to do business. Why is the business not standing? How many of you have gone to sell land? In my village, eh? what is raining? Many of them, they sell land. And I'm here to see anyone that sold the land and became human being because there is a covenant and there is a transaction on that land. That you can never use the money to prosper. Some of the land, they bury human beings. You also, you went there to build house. You wonder why you started the building, you can't complete it. It's not just to do costs on the land. That's blood money, human blood. Now listen, what I'm about to say, if it affects you in any way, is for your good. Forgive me ahead of time. Now, those of you involved in modern day slavery, that carries human beings like you, and take them abroad, for prostitution. And again, we have to go do prostitutes. Prostitution, after some years, until she finished paying you. Maybe you use one million naira to take them abroad, and you charge them 20 million. And then you use, they are using their body to prostitute, to give you money. And you are in using those money to, to, for investment to buy cars. Hear me. If you don't repent and do restitution, your children will suffer. Amen. It's a modern day slavery. They say you are building us, you are buying cars, buying it off people's blood and sweat. And by the way of practicing what God forbids. That's the worst way of slavery. Yes, sir. You will not be here forever. Yes, you might enjoy the beautiful car. Mm. You might enjoy that expensive, that sports car. You might enjoy that. You might live lavishly. You might have security guarding you. But it's appointed unto every man to die once. Yes, sir. And after death is judgment. You will stand before God. And you will tell God that a human being like you was what you transported for prostitution. And they were paying you. You made gain on top of them. And until now, listen, if you are hearing me and you are keeping anyone as a woman, a slave, and they go every night to prostitute and come to balance you, they will not go unless, unless they finish paying you all the money. Slavery with their body. 
God said I should warn you. Dieu That's what I'm talking about. Garde. Pourquoi je parle ici? Repent. Faites la repentance. Restitute. Oh, Release those people faut libérer ces gens to go. The mercy will speak for you. So number two. Deuxièmement. We'll pray. Let me show you number two, then we'll pray. Number two. Deuxièmement. We must demand the closure of the door that illegally opened from, from the heaven's perspective. The way they open that door, we must demand for the closure of the door. So lift up your hand. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say every strong man, every strong man or director, or director of my family suffering of my family suffering of my family suffering of my family suffering operating behind the scene operating behind the scene that came by the reason of the transactions of my father's house that came by the reason of the transactions of my father's house by the blood of jesus by the blood of jesus by the authority in the name of jesus by the authority in the name of jesus from the throne room perspective from the throne room perspective i bound you 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 you out. Come out of my bloodline. Come out of my family. Come out of my foundation. Come out. I shut the door. I shut the door. Clap your hands. Just them out and shut the door. I take the 
the strong man out of your bloodline. Hey, I take them out of your bloodline. Hey, every door that has been opened yes. by the reason of your father's house and your mother's house and your ancestry, I shut the door. The strong man will not assess your family anymore. Amen. So when we talk about Alors, this thing, is the reason, one chose. of the reason why God gave instruction le a donné that you bring sand from your father's house. Le, le Now la, that sand you père. brought from, the, from revelation, what God has shown me in the past when we started not my head, not my God, when God gave me instruction on it. When you get the sand, you, 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 you get everything in that house. They will be arrested, then we bring them under command and destroy them and bring them to the presence where they can be destroyed and we exempt their operations and cause the jams, the altars, the foundational battles to be uprooted. Then by the way of instruction, that's why the three in one pack, you take it back by the instruction we'll give you with the same sound, you go back and spread them there. What happens? You, the Bible says you don't put a new wine in an old wine skin. Yes. Now what happens is that you have taken a new wine by what is released here, a new wine skin, you take it back. What happens is that the old order changes in your family and the new order is established. Yes, sir.